one argument that is often brought up when talking about Linux is that peripheral support. But not necessarily the amount of supported hardware, but more the customization options. Configuring RGB fans, custom keyboard binds or changing your mouse DPI through the vendor's software is often impossible because its software simply does not exist. Or does it? How bad is the current situation on peripheral support? How good are alternative programs? And of course, what are the things that you wanna watch out for if you decided to give Linux a go? All of this and more in today's video, so please make sure that you don't forget to give this video a like and why not also subscribe to the channel if you are interested in more content like this. You done? Okay then, let's go. If you do some research on peripherals like controllers, mice and keyboards, but also other things like headsets or microphones working on Linux, then you might have already noticed that the experiences are very different from one another. Some say that their controllers are just not working at all on Linux, others however say that theirs are running flawlessly compared to getting them to run on Windows. Some say their headphones don't work correctly due to missing drivers, others say that they don't need special drivers on Linux at all. What I want to say is that figuring out on what works well and what works bad is not really that easy. Especially if you have lesser known devices or operate in a very specific niche. Audio was, and to a certain degree still is, a hot topic for the Linux desktop. If you want to work in music or sound production, then make sure to carefully choose what you buy. The thing is, Linux has a massive problem and it's something that I've already talked about many times. We need proprietary vendors. We don't necessarily need proprietary software, but we need software that is developed by the hardware vendor. Stuff like Logitech G-Hub to configure your G Pro Wireless, your keyboard or enabling blue voice on your microphone is something that just isn't available on Linux. And it's really not surprising given that Linux only holds a small percentage of worldwide users which can be further divided into business and personal use cases, which also operate in different fields. Desktop Linux unfortunately still has a bit of the chicken or the egg dilemma going on. Developing for it is expensive and yields no profitable margins due to the lack of users. So why bother, right? On the other hand, without solidified and I'm gonna say verified programs and a unified experience across platforms, users don't really want to switch, which makes sense of course. So what to do? Well in theory it's pretty easy. Initiative. Like well for example. They don't like Windows approaches and decided to build their own operating system. But instead of building something from the ground up by themselves, they cooperate with the Linux community to build something open source. Gaming on Linux is literally my favorite thing to watch develop, since it relies on so many things. Video, audio and peripherals of course. Games utilize so many different tools that basically everyone profits from it. Besides servers maybe, but that's a whole different story. And with the user experience increasing, we'll probably see more people on Linux, either as a side operating system or the even unknowingly game on it, which is great news for proprietary support at some point. But we are not there yet, so what do we have now? Well, if you want to switch to Linux, then there are a few things that you should know. For once, if you don't have an especially rare and unknown mouse, keyboard or controller, then you probably won't run into any issues. But this often stops whenever you need to reconfigure them. Some often change their DPI or keyboard binds. And some mice and keyboards don't even have an internal storage to save their configs at all. These peripherals need some sort of software anyway. So make sure to do your research first, because the more niche your hardware gets, the more likely it is that you run into certain limitations. But luckily you don't really need to worry about that for most input devices. Many USB mice and keyboards already have solidified solutions to configure them. If you own a Logitech G Pro Wireless for example, then you can use Piper to change its configuration. 
But while Piper supports many devices and mice brands, you might notice that some devices like the G303 Shroud Edition might not get picked up. My tip for those is to try Solar instead. Solar also has the advantage that it shows your battery level as well, though some mice already have that out of the box anyway. Configuring keyboards is a bit more tricky since it often depends on how popular your specific one is. In that case, all you can really do is to either just try out programs like OpenRGB and see if your keyboard gets picked up, or you search for solutions online. What you want to find are programs that already are available in either your distributions repository or of a flatpak or snap. You can also try to find fixes on GitHub, but I don't really recommend the solution until you really know what you're doing and far more importantly, what you're actually installing. Not everyone on the internet is nice, you know. An especially tricky area is audio hardware compatibility. You bought a Blue Yeti X microphone? It works really well and that's true. But don't forget that while the device itself might perform that way, you might not get all the features that you paid for. And there often is no way of fixing that. Audio interfaces are also troubling and I had my fair share of problems with some that allegedly worked just fine. Others, however, really do perform as intended. You might be able to use Alsa Mixer, PayView Control or whatever it's called, or another frontend application to fix many problems, though why the heck is adjusting audio bitrate and depth not a standard setting? Believe it or not, cheap headphone microphones often sound way worse because they advertise themselves to the operating system as being high quality. Some other things that many might interest are, well, it's not really a peripheral, but I'm saying it anyway, capture cards. Maybe you're a streamer, a YouTuber, or just someone who records something through the camera. I'm telling you that you need to do your research because a capture card either works or doesn't. Some do have fixes, but don't rely on them. Oh yeah, and one more thing that many actually brought up in the past, controller mapping. You see, controllers work great on Linux, and I mean it. But there is one argument that is often brought up when talking about a lesser experience and it's controller remapping. Especially if the controller itself might actually work but gets picked up incorrectly. Let me introduce you to the SDL2 gamepad tool, which easily allows you to reconfigure your controller if the game itself does not allow it. Yeah, I don't really know what to say here since it is just reconfiguring it, so yeah. In conclusion, peripheral support on Linux is somewhat interesting and you definitely have to do your research, especially the more niche your product gets. General support for mice, keyboards and headphones is really good, as long as you really don't need to configure them. Doing so might work, but it is not a guarantee and might also take some research and patience. So what is the actual experience really like? For me personally, it was really easy. Onboard storage mouse, no configurable keyboard, generic headphones and a compatible audio interface. But honestly, supporting very customizable hardware is still something that Linux is very weak in and I would lie if I'd say otherwise. For most users, and in that case I really mean most, the experience will be flawless. But as soon as we get into a more specific niche like gaming, then it's already kind of a different story. But from what I've experienced so far, it will still be sufficient enough that it won't affect your enjoyment. And that's where I'll leave it. So please make sure to give this video a like and why not also subscribe to the channel? You're still here, so I guess it wasn't that bad, right? Anyway, right here is another interesting video if you wanna check it out. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.